Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rabbi Jenny Greenspan here for Congregation Beth El Zedek, and here doing our weekly Shabbat morning Torah talk. I'm hoping uh, we will get to uh, enjoy a few moments together in the middle of Sukkot uh, for this Shabbat Chol Hamoed Sukkot, this Shabbat where it is simultaneously Chol, meaning regular time, but also Moed, part of the uh, celebration of Sukkot, the intermediate days of the festival. Shabbat Shalom, and I suppose Mo'adim L'Simcha, the greeting for uh, in between the two Chagim of Sukkot, where we say we have our seasons of joy. Mo'adim L'Simcha and Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I apologize, the layout of Facebook Live seems to have shifted a little bit, uh, so if I seem a little bit less uh, interactive than usual or a little uh, more confused, I am... Uh, just getting used to the new layout and making sure I can see what is happening for everybody. Um, but I will say Shabbat Shalom and welcome. As usual, if you would like to follow along with me on a PDF of this morning's Torah portion, you can find it on the Beth El Zedek website or in any standard uh, chumash, uh, as I will be using the, uh, the the basic text of our Torah, the, our, our core text of our Torah. If you do have an Es Chaim Chumash, I will today be referencing one of the commentaries that it records. Uh, so it might be helpful if you have an Es Chaim uh, specifically to follow along with me there, but if not, that is still going to be okay. Uh, if you would like to get the PDF of Etzheim from our website, you just go to bez613.org and select those Shabbat resources and scroll down to Etzheim. Um, and we will be, when we're ready to begin, we'll be on page 538, which is part of what I wanted to uh, want to talk about this morning, but first I'll uh, extend some greetings and they see where they come through. I'll say Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining to uh, Phyllis Luger and to Alan Hamburger, Jim Hammonds, to the Sclairs. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Good morning to Marty Lip, to Carol Steinfeld, and Michael Kahn. So uh, good to still see everybody joining from all over, uh, all over the state and joining us this morning. So I'll say Shabbat Shalom. And then we want to jump in. So you might have thought, so I want to hold two things for to start. Last week, we read the second to last Torah portion of our entire Torah scroll. And next week, we will begin the first Torah portion of the scroll. So you might have thought this week, while we were in between last week, we did the second to last, and next week we're going to do the first. You might have thought that this week, we would do the last one <laughs> that we would on this Shabbat in between the the uh, ha Parashat HaAzinu, the second to last Torah portion, and next week when we begin again with Bereshit, you might have thought that we'd be doing the Zotabracha, the final Torah portion of our scroll. But in fact, we are not. That is just not how our our uh, ancestors, our early sages, decided to lay out our Torah reading as we go through each year. Instead, we're not going to read Vizot HaBracha until, for our community, Tuesday, for some communities, Wednesday. We're not going to read Vizot HaBracha until we begin celebrating Simchat Torah until we celebrate the holiday on which we conclude and begin our Torah reading again. So you might say, fine, we're not reading it this week because we're going to pick it up next week. Um, but I'm not certain that that's uh, really what's going on either. I think there's something else uh, to look into and something else to learn uh, as we go. Um, because I'm not sure that it's just uh, we're waiting until Simchat Torah to read this one. Because on Simchat Torah, we will also read a piece of Parashat Bereshit. We'll read a part of that first Torah portion, and we will still do that Torah portion next week uh, as we begin our Torah reading cycle anew. So it, it doesn't seem to be that there's an issue with repeating that Torah portion, because we will do that with Breshit. We'll read it both on Simchat Torah and on a Shabbat. So you might have thought we'd read Vizot HaBracha on a Shabbat and Simchat Torah, and yet we don't. We don't read Vizot HaBracha on a Shabbat. Instead, right here in the middle of Sukkot, which is always going to be, the Shabbat of Sukkot is always going to be the last Shabbat before we begin our Torah reading cycle again. Instead, we read something different 
something that doesn't come from either end of our Torah, um, but really toward the end of the book of Exodus, so a little past about a third of the way through. And we read from Parashat Ki Tisa, um, from the Torah portion most famous for the episode of the golden calf, of our ancestors building and then worshiping a golden calf. But that's also not the part that we're going to read today. So I want to take a look at what we're going to read today. Before we jump in, I want one other uh, help with framing why we might be looking at something different today. It comes from one of my colleagues, one of my classmates from rabbinical school, Rabbi Morris Panitz, uh, who said that perhaps this entire season right now, from Rosh Hashanah all the way through to Simchat Torah, we are kind of going through a reliving of the Garden of Eden story before we start reading it again next week. Rabbi Panitz suggested that Rosh Hashanah as Yom Harat Olam, the day of creation, is as though we are reborn brand new each year. This is the day that Adam and Chava, that Adam and Eve were first created. We celebrate that and that rebirth and re a new beginning on Rosh Hashanah. That on Yom Kippur, to some degree, we are as though we have just eaten from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and bad, and suddenly we are not new and reborn and innocent, but rather suddenly have a notion of morality and mortality. When we learn of the good and evil and the choice to, to choose between the two, and we learn of our possibility of being uh, dust once again, that on Yom Kippur we ate of the tree and be and become aware of morality and mortality. So Rabbi Panet suggests, therefore, that Sukkot, when we go out into our temporary shelters and look for God's protection, this is us recreating, leaving the Garden of Eden. So I think that that's an interesting framework that I want us to hold for a moment while we look at the Torah reading that is available to us today and see about if we can kind of answer the question of why as we're holding this reliving of the Garden of Eden, instead of reading the final Torah portion of our Torah, we read this instead. So if you are in an Enzchaim Chumash, go ahead and join me on page 538 at verse 18. I'm sorry, 539 at verse 18. If you are in a different chumash, you'll just go to Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. And since I'm going to read a few uh, verses today, we'll do this in the English. In verse 18, he, Moses, said to God, Let me behold your presence. And God answered, I will make my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you the name Adonai, and the grace that I grant and the compassion that I show. But, God said, you cannot see my face, for a person may not see, my say, see me and live. And God said, see, there's a place near me. Station yourself by the rock, and as my presence passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and shield you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. In this passage, here inserted to the middle of Sukkot, we see a section where Moses has done all that Moses needed to do to help assist God in freeing the Israelites from slavery and bringing them out to wander in Sukkot, <laughs> to wander the wilderness in their little dwelling shelters that God takes them through, that shows them God's presence without actually being the face or the body of God. But Moses, who has been kind of God's uh, right-hand man, asks to be able to see God's face. And God says, no, no person can see my face. Chatam Sofer, you can read along with the commentary with me in the very bottom of page 539 onto page 540, where it says 20 to 23 underneath the line. What does it mean that a human being cannot see God's face, but can see God's back? In the words of Chatam Sofer, we cannot see God directly. We can only see the difference that God has made after the fact. We can recognize God's reality by seeing the difference God has made in people's lives. So Chatam Sofer says it's actually not just Moses who gets to see God's back. In the Hebrew, the word for back is the same as the word for after. Chatam Sofer is picking up on that and saying, 
we don't see God's physical back. I'm not saying that God has a physical body the way you and I do, but that God's physical physical back is really the after effects of God in this world. So this Shabbat, if we hold what my colleague Rabbi Panik suggested, that Sukkot is about practicing for the leaving of the Garden of Eden, this Shabbat, we are getting the reminder to look for God's after effects, to look for the evidence of God in the world, even when we start preparing to undo our Sukkah, to take our Sukkah back down. Today we're in the fifth day of Sukkot, in just a few days. We will take it down, and the Sukkah is a, is a symbol of God's presence, a symbol of God's shelter as our ancestors moved through the wilderness. So here in the middle of Sukkot, we're also getting the reminder that even when we let go that symbol, we can still look for God's after effects. We can still look for the good deeds that we do for one another and still look for the evidence of God in our nature, in the world around us, that we will survive the wandering in the desert as we go about our lives. I think it's actually important that we don't actually finish our Torah reading on a Shabbat we finish it on a holiday, that we hold on to the notion that as human beings, our lives are constantly just moving forward. We don't have uh, resolutions to our stories the way that literature does. Our stories have ups and downs, they have climaxes, and they have moments of pause, tragedy, and they have joys. Um, But they don't always tie together in any little bow. Sometimes our stories just end when it's time to. And so our Torah reading says that we're not going to let it end. We're going to let us ourselves keep going. But here in Sukkot, we're also going to ri- remind ourselves that we can still see God's after effects, that we will begin our story anew as there are still new lessons to learn, which I'll speak about next week. And we will keep going that even when our Sukkah, the physical reminder that we are safe even out of the Garden of Eden, uh, is also taken down, we'll keep looking for God in this world. Uh, Knowing that we will not have the same kind of closeness of a holiday, of a true Chag, of a uh, of a Yom Tov level holiday. We'll have Chanukah, we'll have Purim, we'll have Tu Bishvat, we'll have a few moments of celebration between now and then. But the next time that we will be in full Chag, full Yom Tov mode after Sukkot ends, it's not until Pesach, not until the spring with Passover, almost as far away on the calendar as it could possibly be. And so we might need this reminder this Shabbat. We don't need to end our story to begin anew. We know that we can begin anew without an ending, but that we can continually look for God in this world and continue to see God's back or God's after effects. So as we head into a week of conclusion and of restarting, I hope that we all remember and remind ourselves and hold on to those moments of seeing God's effect on this world. Say Shabbat Shalom. I know I didn't get to all of the greetings, so I'll get some in right now. Say Shabbat Shalom. I'm glad you are here as well. Uh, to Cheryl Tof and to the Ashworths, I am so glad to see everybody each week. And uh, I look forward to beginning our Torah reading cycle anew next year. And Shabbat Shalom. And uh, thank you also to uh, Julia Whitehead. And I look forward to seeing everybody anew. Uh, not next year. We're we're already in the new year, 5782. But next uh, Torah reading cycle as we begin from the very beginning once again next week. So again, Shabbat Shalom. Moadim Lesimcha. As we do conclude our time in Sukkot, uh, you can join us at 10 o'clock on the live stream or in the sanctuary. Uh, for our Shabbat Chol HaMoed Sukkot uh, service at 10 o'clock. We'll see you soon. Shabbat Shalom and Moadim L'Simcha Chag Sameach.